three, two, one, come on! Research has proven time and time again that when kids are engaged in hands-on activities, they retain the information better, up to 75%. In this video, we're going to share with you an educational activity that does just that. It's the salt dough relief map. We're going to show you step-by-step -step instructions, quick tips to get it right, and what it does for your brain. Who won the battle of Bull Run? Who is it? We don't know. Let's is check. it red for confederates or blue, or blue for unions? The answer is... Yes. Actually, no, you have to comment. Hi, I am Leilani and this is our channel, Living with Eve, and I am a former private school and public school teacher. Now I am a home educator to four beautiful children. And if you're interested in gaining tips, support, and guidance along your way as you help your child grow developmentally and educationally, make sure to click on that subscribe button and the notification bell so you can get reminders whenever we do an upload. I bet when you remember grade school, you remember the festivals and the parties and the crafts and the big activities. And I bet that those days of reading and writing just kind of blend together. So why not find time where you can incorporate them into your home? Here's what you need. Like tracing paper, pencils and a map, card stuff, tape, cardboard, salt, flour, mixing book, water, measuring cups, paint, brush, hot glue, toothpicks, construction of a regular paper for labels, and lots of room because this takes several days to do. Step one, trace the United States. Don't forget to take your tracing paper onto the map. It will slide around and you don't want that. Step two, get some cardstock and make sure the tracing paper fits on it. Step three. Next, you want to glue it to the carp stop. Now you need to let it dry. Step four. Now cut around the outer edges. Step five. Trace the outline onto the cardboard. I cut this out and then I traced it on the cardboard. If you want some lakes and rivers, here's a tip. Okay, now we're gonna go through and we wanna get the Great Lakes, so we're gonna cut now the inside border, right? And then trace that on top of that. Brain break, so you just saw my kids trace and cut out the map of the United States following all those little details of Massachusetts along with the Great Lakes and Michigan, and they're doing this a total of four times. They're tracing and cutting and tracing again and cutting and molding. They will start to memorize these little details and even talk about it as they're doing it and even point out if there's a mistake. Now, now we're, we're gonna, gonna make the salt too. First flour, then salt, then water, then we're mix it up with a hand. Here, kids get to experience some chemistry. Have you ever heard of that phrase that the kitchen is the most used laboratory and it's in your own home? When they mix the ingredients, they're gonna see chemical reactions. The flour is going to dissolve into the water and make it more starchy, while the salt is going to start to tighten the dough and make it stronger and more flexible. One of the biggest benefits of the hands-on activity is a chance for immediate feedback and critique. Your children will interact with you. Siblings and friends may get involved. They work together to solve the problem, build social skills, and give and get immediate feedback. This is way faster than waiting for you to get a paper back from your teacher with a grade on it. All right, so these are the layers. Tell me what this uh, is, Isaac. The um, C level is blue, and then green is the first layer. The next string is uh, just hills and stuff. The next string is um, small mountains, bigger, 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 big, biggest mountains. Right, and so we're kind of looking at, at it like this. Teaching relief maps must include the topic of elevation. So I told them what they want to do is start with the first green layer.
Of course, I mean, with kids, it's not gonna be perfect. It's not a big deal. It's more about getting the hands on and touching the map. So let's talk about the benefits of the dough itself. Number one, it's going to improve your fine motor skills. Now, if you don't know what fine motor skills are, those are working the little muscles in your fingers, your thumb, your wrist, and your hands. Together, you're gonna to be flattening shapes out, pinching things, smoothing it out. All the while, you are strengthening those muscles. Number two, it can have a calming effect on the student. Just imagine as you squish it between your fingers, right there, that's your relaxing moment. Number three, math concepts. What, seriously? Listen, as they're working with the dough, they're comparing size and shape. They're using trial and error to get the right structure just the way that they want it. Number four, it benefits the senses, specifically the tactile senses. It's great for kids that have sensory processing disorder to get their hands messy and involved. Now, if you don't know what sensory processing disorder is, I am gonna go ahead and share a link up there so you can click on that and watch that video. The hardest thing for you to do as a parent educator is keeping your hands off of the relief mat. Let the kids do the work. Let them be the ones that shape it and mold it. If you have to sit on your hands, sit on your hands, leave the room, but you should be there for guidance only and support. This is their project, not yours. Try to get that mitten, because Michigan is famous for their mitten. Mish? Michigan. Like mish, mitt. M M. They both start with M. Mitt. Mitt. Certainly M I. Yeah. Michigan Mitt. So that's how you remember. That's how I remember. Now that the basic outline is done, if you want to perfect it, you can go ahead and take a pencil and fill in the little details. Now it's time to add elevation. If the dough is a little bit watery, you can add in some flour and salt, and this will firm up the dough so you can pinch up those mountains and it will hold the elevation. That's a really good technique with the pinching. I like that. Now there's another small little bit of mountain range that's gonna come a little bit down this way. During this time, you will find that you will talk about the location of these mountains. Guys. Cumberland Plateau. Uh, you're, you're up there. You can name them, describe them, talk about their location, talk about the climate, the wildlife that lives in that area. I think that was a little bit too close to the point. Mid. Yeah, West. this is the Midwest because Texas that's the West. doesn't even have one mountain. Well, they have some plateaus. What are plateaus? And any memorable vacation that you may have had to these areas, all of those things are going to raise that retention rate. Sometimes letting it dry a little bit will allow the dough to become a little bit more firm so you can shape it a little bit more. This dough can take time to dry, so feel free to use a hairdryer. Once it is dry, it is time to paint. So I mixed up a little bit of white with this blue because the north we were gonna do um, dark blue. All right, let's talk about the benefits of painting. One, hand-eye coordination will develop as they're painting. They can see how long or how short their stroke needs to be. Two, this also helps with fine motor skills and mobility skills. I'm gonna paint the brown now. It's Mexico and Canada. Three, painting helps kids focus on details. Four, painting is now going to help them memorize the borders and outlines of the states and lakes. We decided that we wanted to do a map of the Civil War states. We are done. Not done, we have to color it, or paint it, I should say. So as you can see, ours has a little crack in it. No big deal, you can totally patch that up with some dough, but we tried to use some Elmer's glue. It kind of worked okay, but not really. It's better just to use some dough. So now we finished our map! And now we're gonna put some flags on. Oh, the that so let's get right to it. For a little extra incentive, you can add some labels. We use toothpicks, and since you're doing a relief map and you got some 3D going on, why not add a little bit more dimension? We need a map of where the battle is, glue, and toothpicks. 
We're using red if the Confederate one and blue if the Union one. First thing you need to do is write, write the battle name on the strip. Step one, fold a piece of paper. Second, get a pencil. Or pen. Third, get which battle you are doing. Okay, so I'm doing the battle of uh, Bull Run. I'm doing the battle of Gettysburg. So what you need to do to glue it to the toothpick is you need to three dots. And so you take a toothpick and you put it right in the middle dot. It's just three dots. Here's the finished product. You need a hot, hot glue gun. gun. Do not use hot glue guns unless your parent lets you or you're an adult. So in other words, mommy's doing it. Yes, mommy does the hot glue gun. He's pushing him. Is there any to go over here? No. Nope. What? Voila, you have a relief map. Now, have you ever heard of executive functioning skills? Well, if you haven't, I'm gonna put a link up here to a video that's gonna talk all about that and some ideas and activities that you can do to improve those skills. Also, check out a review on our favorite history curriculum, the history curriculum that inspired us to do this project in the link right up above. So if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to share it on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram if you think your friends will benefit from learning about this. And consider subscribing, joining our family, and journey with us because your child is exceptional too.